So um, without further ado, let's go right into our presentation. So basically, this is a uh, DNA Center demo webinar, which basically means I'm going to give a short overview of what DNA Center is so you're not totally lost when I go into the demo, um, and just go through a few uh, basic uh, concepts of what DNA Center does and how it works. And then we will um, uh, and then we'll go into the demo and I'll show you how it's going. So basically the whole concept of DNA Center is a controller based architecture. And the reason for this is that a, a controller rather than a network management system really controls your network. It does more than just give you pop-ups and tell you that something's wrong or give you a way to control your devices. It really helps you manage the network and takes a lot of, let's say, the grunt work out, the, the stuff that you just do every day, every day, every day. It, it tries to automate that. And the reasons for that are on this slide here. Just the landscape of today's network where um, all of the different digital disruptions from IoT to, um, to so much video, to so many apps, um, the network complexity, um, so much more complex the switches and wireless has become. Most of us are migrating to the cloud. Um, a lot of our applications have been migrated to the cloud, whether we want them to or not. So this requires that we put in a new architecture or, or work with a new architecture within our, um, within our networks. And finally, um, the business is coming to IT to help them out. And this is, this is fairly new. Um, before, IT was just always take care of the network and, uh, and leave the business alone. And now the business is coming to us saying, uh, well, we, we're in finance and we've got to integrate this blockchain product within our servers. It, it's key, it's core to what we're doing. Or we're manufacturing and we have to have uh, machine learning in, in our factory now. Or we have this new client facing application that's really important to our business. And the people that are innovating all this are you. So there's simply just not the time to manage and operate the networks the way we used to. And because of that, um, we need something that's intent-based networking. And, and customers come and they tell me, you know, it's just too much. All this software-defined networking and intent-based networking with uh, creating policies and automation and analytics, it, it's, it's just um, too much work to integrate. So hopefully what we're going to show you today is that it's really not. That with Cisco, we can show you how to integrate um, intent-based networking without the headache um, and do it in a staged way um, so that you are not um, so that you are not uh, um, uh, stopping your business to to do intent based networking. So the way DNA Center works is um, there are three sections of DNA Center. And we're going to see that in this uh, presentation. Automation means the things that you normally would do manually. So install a new device, or change the settings, or update, or put a patch in, or, or you have new barcode scanners, and they require new QoS settings. So you need to go in and change some of your VLANs. So what if you could automate those changes, those, those, those moves, ads, and changes to your network? Second of all, analytics and assurance. How much time do you spend troubleshooting? What if you could automate that? What if, what if the, the network could go out, look for problems proactively instead of waiting for people to call you with a problem and then show you that there's a problem and show you how to resolve that problem? Um, this is the DHCP server. Or look here, you've, you've limited the number of users on this access point and that's why people are having trouble connecting. So you want something to just tell you something, just fix this real quick or do this real quick. Um, the future of intent-based networking will allow us to do what they call closed loop, where the system automatically changes these, but most IT managers don't want that yet. They still want to be in control of the changes and to be able to make those corrections as, as best as possible. So what we're doing in DNA Center is giving you the change that you need to make. Finally, in security and policy, this is a big question. 
intent-based networking is all based on all these complex policies and how do I set this up and what's micro segmentation? How, I do, how do I do all this? And um, hopefully we'll have time to go into a little tiny bit of roadmap today and we'll talk about some of the things that are coming out really soon that not only will facilitate the security and policy, will actually automate a lot of that through machine learning and analytics. So um, what is DNA Center? DNA Center is an appliance. Um, it sits on your network. It manages all of your campus and it can manage your remote branches too. So you don't need to buy an appliance for every branch. You buy an appliance, appliance at your home campus, you can manage your branches through your DNA Center appliance. All of your physical and virtual infrastructure then connects to your DNA Center appliance just, just as though it were a network management system, except it's doing a lot more than network managing. And then just like a, a network management system, you have logins, you have uh, different types of logins for administrators and so forth. So, um, so you can uh, have different capabilities for different logins. So the first thing we're going to talk about is automation. Now, again, we're talking about getting rid of CLI. Doesn't mean you can't still do CLI if, if you need to do it or there's certain features where you really feel you need to have that, that uh, CLI flexibility. Um, you can still do CLI. You can still CL, CLI into your equipment. But we found that most of the configuration errors in systems are because people just make mistakes. I mean, if you have um, 22 lines of code to put into 44 different switches, it's almost impossible not to make a single error somewhere. So to be able to do this once, create a configuration and push it out to all your devices, uh, cuts down on the errors and it, it's obviously a lot quicker. Um, also, you can do changes that way. If you have a change that you need to do, again, the, the example of the new system of barcode scanners that requires a special type of uh, segmentation or QoS, you do that into one switch, you save the configuration, you push it out to all of the switches that are the same model or the same function. So it, it really uh, allows you a lot of benefits. First of all, you deploy new networks in minutes, not days. So you got a new branch office where you buy upgrade some of your switches, it's just cake work. Uh, second of all, you're ensuring consistency and at the end of the day, just lowering the cost of your network operations. So <laughs> there are two ways that we can do automation. First of all, the number one question, can we do uh, automation? Can we do network automation um, for layer two? Or does this have to be software defined networking and SD access and micro segmentation? No, it does not. This can be um, in your older switches and your newer switches as well. Um, but basically the way you're going to do it, we're going to show you this in the, um, in the demo, you are going to go into the system and create profiles for your users, for your devices, and for your applications. And um, then those users will always have that same profile. That profile follows them through any switch or access point that they're using in the network. So you will always, you will never have to, first of all, rely on a static configuration. And second of all, the policies follow the user. So users can only see certain uh, servers or certain areas of the network, which keeps down traffic and it's also much more secure. The other thing is network changes are so easy to make. Um, you go in, you do the configuration you need to do. We actually can do tests of the configuration, uh, both pre and post. So before you do the upgrade, you can test to make sure that this is gonna run well on this particular switch. Then you push out the change to all your switches. You can run tests on your switches, and then that will be saved as part of what we call the golden image. So what is the golden image? The golden image is an image you create for each one of your switches, your routers, your access points, and your wireless LAN controllers that is the configuration the way you want it configured um, based on policies in your company and different things. And DNA Center walks you through this through the, with this circular process you're seeing here, which is called Software Image Management or SWIM. And Software Image Management basically allows you to go in, 
do the configurations you want to do, make sure that the configurations work, test them before you roll it out, roll it out, and then test it after you've rolled it out. The other thing it allows you to do is test new images that come from Cisco. So let's say that um, you get a new image uh, for a switch and there's a bunch of new features that you like, you want to upgrade them and you want to deploy them, but you're using a really old and odd feature, maybe esoteric feature from Cisco that not a lot of people use. And for some reason, it just doesn't run well with this new upgrade. You may choose not to do that image upgrade. Well, SWIM will allow you to test for those things. And finally, if you have a patch, you can install patches without having to install the, the whole image. And you know that can save you a lot of time because when you do the, the cutover for a new image, you do take your switch down for, for a few minutes. So being able to just throw a patch in um, saves you a lot of time and saves you downtime as well. <clears throat> so, you know, this is a marketing slide, but at the end of the day, I hope you can see it is, uh, it gives you a lot of, uh, of um, saves you a lot of time. So let's go in without any further ado to the demo and show you what, uh, what you're going to see. When you go into DNA Center, <clears throat> the first thing you're going to see, and I, I want to apologize, the, obviously the, network, the networks around the United States are, the, the networks around the United States are being slammed right now. So there are, um, uh, this will be a little slow and the audio may drop. I'm seeing that the audio is dropping a little bit. This is simply due to so many people working from home. But basically, let's go through this. On the first screen, you'll see basically the state of the network. And then if you go into the provisioning screen here, which I've loaded, you're going to see the basically all of the network inventory. This is going to give me the routers, switches, access points, and wireless LAN controllers. Now, there's a few things that I can do with this. First of all, I can look at uh, just the, the functionality. Here I have reachable. I've got the MAC address, uh, what the role is of this. I have the IP address. I also have over here, interesting thing, this will tell me the image version to make sure my image is updated, uh, how long this particular device has been up, and <clears throat> what, uh, what the serial number. So if I need to, uh, manage this device or do an RMA for this device. I have the serial number. I have everything at the touch of my fingers. Um, if I go into, uh, okay, so I'm in inventory now. If I go into policy, I can see the different policies I have, and we're going to go through policy in a minute, but I can look through my groups. So these are my different VLANs that I have um, and service groups that I've set up. I can look at my fabrics if I'm running fabrics, and I can look at my different services such as StealthWatch, application visibility, and the different apps. Now DNA Center runs on different apps, so you may choose not to install certain apps uh, because you're not using them. They're not useful to you. Or you may decide to, just, to, uh, to install a number of apps. You also have something that helps you through plug and play. So you can uh, select a new device. It will find a new device. And then you can throw a, a golden image to that particular device. I can also look at any of the locations. Rather than global, I can go into a certain part of the world where I, where I have uh, other uh, devices installed and um, service that, uh, that particular uh, device or that particular network. Under image repository, I can see all of my golden images. And this again is important because if I have a new device, I can simply drag and drop a new image to that device. Again, apologies, the, the, uh, the network is very slow today. So here I have my 
devices, and I've uh, I've named these. So I'm going to name these for for a different, and you can literally give these any name you want. So you could say that this is the if let's say it's a university, you're going to say these are the student routers, or the uh, library access routers, or the um, uh, core switches or whatever, and then that's the configuration that goes on a certain model of Cisco switch that has that function. And that's because you could have two of the same model of switches with di very different func functions. So if you could have a um, 9200 model switch, you have 15 of them that has one configuration and 12 of them that has another, and you would have different images for those with different configurations that you just, all you need to do is, is throw out. We also have uh, profiles here. So we have small branch, ground field, and different profiles that we've set up to be able to throw right into a configuration on a switch. So if the, if the image is good and I want to change the configuration without changing the image, I just go to a profile and change it. So this is my automation. One quick thing I want to say about automation is that a lot of people use um, uh, a lot of people use uh, Cisco Prime for automation. And you can still use Cisco Prime for automation in conjunction with Cisco DNA Center. And the way that works is a feature within Prime infrastructure that is called uh, DNA Center Migration. And it will synchronize all of your maps, topologies, your devices, and your configurations from Cisco Prime Infrastructure to Cisco DNA Center. That means you don't have to configure almost anything. It's going to completely configure itself based on what you've already done in Prime Infrastructure. Then what you can do is continue to do your basic management and maybe your automation through Prime Infrastructure because that's what your team is used to, and use DNA Center for policy and for Assurance, which are features which are not as advanced in Prime Infrastructure. Um, your, feature can use, your, your team can use these new features in Cisco DNA Center until they get used to it, and then you can decide what's the right time to cut over from Prime Infrastructure to DNA Center. In other words, you can use them completely in parallel. So if you do that and you say, okay, I'm going to use Prime Infrastructure for my automation for the first month or so, or a couple of months, or first year if you want, and I'm going to use Assurance because this is really going to cool. It's going to take away my troubleshooting, and, and um, DNA Center does a great job of this. So basically what it does is it automatically detects and prioritizes issues. It will give you instant guided reme remediation for what is the resolution for that issue, and basically what that does is you're just, you spend less time chasing problems. The other thing that's very important about this is it finds problems before your clients do. So if someone is having trouble connecting to the Wi-Fi, you don't have to wait for them to call you. Um, DNA Center will tell you um, someone's having an onboarding issue. Now, a lot of people, the first thing people will tell me is that, you know, I don't spend that much time. And you'd be surprised. We actually did a very detailed survey of tons of customers. Um, we asked for customers that had around 800 users. Some of them had maybe 1,200. Some of them had maybe 600, 700, but the average was right around 800 users, wired and wireless. We asked them to take a tally, um, each of their IT teams, of how much, how many times they did these tasks on the left. Trace route, um, chased a slow onboarding problem, looked for a device RPA failure, a router failure, uh, did a radio channel analysis, so something for interference on the wireless, or replicated an issue or, God forbid, actually drove out to the site. And we found out that uh, they were actually quite a few times. In fact, occurrences per week here are, um, and this is per uh, enterprise, per company, were as many as 25 times per week um, per occurrence. So they did these quite often. And the time adds up. Even though it only takes you about six, min six minutes to do a complete trace route, through CLI, if you're doing that 25 times a week, you're spending 15 days a year just doing trace routes. So if you've got a program that just does that automatically for you, if you just look at it um, and, and see uh, the per hop statistics from end to end, 
um, all of these things tend to add up. So that's the point. And the other thing is that, you know, we're all, especially I'm sure your IT teams are really well trained. And if they're having a problem that's having a, they have a customer that, or a client that's having a poor wireless experience, they know the steps to go through the channel analysis and replicate the issue. God forbid they have to go to the site and do all of these things. But DNA Center can do this automatically. And this is savings not only for your IT team, but it's savings for the person that's having the problem. So you're actually uh, helping your company be more efficient as well. So how does DNA Assurance do this? Well, it pulls telemetry um, through all kinds of sources, trace routes, syslog, NetFlow, your AAA server, all of your routers, your wireless, uh, your switches. Uh, it pulls in IPSLA, DNS. It'll use SNMP as well. So we're going to be pulling in all of this data and comparing it, and that's how we get these insights. The other thing that we're doing is we are creating what's called a normal for your network. And what does this mean? Well, we use uh, a feature within DNA Center called AI Network Analytics, which is machine learning, to kind of learn what's normal for your network. And let me give you an example. Let's say that one of your buildings is next to a school, and they have tons of wireless. And that building just always suffers from interference. Well, if your network management system is always telling you interference, 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 you're just going to start to ignore these things. And it, it just becomes noise in, in the machine, if you will. So what the DNA Center um, AI network analytics will do is look for these things that are always happening and are just normal, just part of the network, things that you would normally just ignore. And it flags then only things that are abnormal. Let me show you how this works. So a traditional system, a network management system with, with what we call traps or SNMP traps, will look for something that's outside of the normal. So the curve is too high or too low. So too much latency or uh, the, the packet rate is too low or something like this. And it'll flag things that are above or below the normal. But in some networks, um, you just can't go on best practices normal, like our example of the, the network with a lot of interference. So we will do a dynamic baseline where we look at what is normal for your network. And you can see that's in this curve. So this red area above is no longer red. That's just normal. But, but this right here is something that's abnormal for you. So your network should be down here in this green area. So by doing this, it only sends you important issues and doesn't waste your time with things that are just normal issues that your network has because of uh, the network conditions. So, um, and th this is really important also with application experience. And you know what? What I'm going to do before I go into application experience, I'm going to get this slide might have gotten a little bit out of order. Let's go into Assurance and see how this works. So in Assurance, I've got a full um, dashboard here of all my devices. It's going to tell me where I'm having problems, right? Uh, big and red here, really easy to see. You can see that my wired and wireless clients seem to be doing fine, but I'm having some problem with my access points. So let's go look and my top 10 issues. So this is going to show me my top 10 issues anytime I open up this window. And fortunately, I don't have 10 issues. I only have a few issues. Um, we've got device time that's drifted, and that can happen when your WAN connection is slow, which obviously right now with everyone across the United States working from home is going to happen. But this one says radio high utilization. So let's click on that and look at what that tells us. That tells us that this radio is experienced, this particular access point has high utilization. So I can click on that and go look at this particular radio and see exactly what's happening. And this will give us a really good look at a number of different things in DNA Center. One of them is, first of all, called Device 360, which you're seeing up here. Device 360 gives me this global view of this particular device. It's going to show me my issues, my neighbor topology. I can do a path trace. In fact, 
it's already done a path trace for me right here where the access point is located uh, as per my uh, controller and the clients. It's going to show me my connectivity and everything. Now I can go on this timeline here and go back in time. So this is the present right here. This is where we are right now. But I can go back in time. And as I go back in time, you can see the device health numbers on the bottom are moving. They're changing. So I can look back. I can also change this device time to seven days if this was maybe a problem that someone told me about yesterday or people have been complaining about before. I can go back in time and look a few days ago and see what performance was. I can also do something that's called intelligent capture. Intelligent capture, if you've used programs like Chariot, where you can actually do a, a get or a put to a particular device and, and see what the throughput is, the actual net throughput, that, that's basically what we're able to do here. So we're able to do packet captures. And if you look in the industry, there's a lot of assurance programs where they install devices on your network so that you can do packet captures and so forth. Well, DNA Center actually uses your access points for this role so that we can do gets and puts to devices from the access point to our, to our switches or to our routers or to DNA Center. So basically what this can tell me here are how many clients that this access point has, the top clients with uh, transmit failed packets, this will give me my channel utilization. Now this is very interesting. It's showing me the amount of utilization. The green is this access point. The yellow is other access point and the red is non Wi-Fi. So this is obviously interference issues. Most of the channel utilization is not me. It's someone else. So um, this also tells me that here. And if we go down further down here, we're going to see frame rate over the air and frame errors. Frame areas have gone up. Obviously, interference is going to do that. And um, should be able to see spectrum analysis. Here we go. Since we know we're having interference issues, we can do a spectrum analysis. Now, oopa, network is slow. I'm sorry, guys. But the idea here is that I don't have to drive out to the site to see that this access point is having uh, radio issues. So if we look at the five gigahertz radio, we go down here, we're having the same issues on two and five. So what we may wanna do is limit the channel size that we're going on, or um, this might be also looking at how many access points I have in this particular office, this also might be a very good candidate to upgrade to Wi-Fi 6, which has much better channel usage. So anyway, I um, wanted to show you that in Assurance. So let's look at, first of all, our dashboard. So this is our main health dashboard. That will, that's what we started with. That's what we're going to use usually when we go into Assurance and look for the issues, the main issues that are popping up. But we can also look at our wireless sensors. We can look at the, the network health, which is going to be devices, switches, routers, access points. We can look at client health, or we can look at application health. So look, let's look at client health. And again, this is uh, what we call client health 360. So this gives me a 360 view of all my clients. This is the time travel up here right at the top. Show me how they've been going. And I, I can go back in time seven days if I want to. Out of the way. Why? So now I'm going back seven days. So if someone told me they had a problem on St. Patrick's Day, 317, I can look and see, uh, you know, what the deal was, at what time. This will tell me the health of these devices, and I can get a really nice onboarding times, uh, how many clients I have per SSID. Um, uh, the RSSI, roaming times from access point to access point, and the number of clients I have on 5 gigahertz versus 2.4. This will also give me a list of all the devices um, that are connected to the network here. So I can go down and look at every single wireless device on here. 
trends and insights will give me things like a heat map. So first of all, this is part of AI network analytics. And um, I'm actually writing a blog post on this right now. This is really interesting. This window will allow us to compare all of the access points in our network. Now I can compare this on an access point basis. I can compare this on a location basis, uh, frequency basis, any way that I want to. And I can look from best to worst of all my radios. Now I have 1800 radios in this network. <clears throat> it's a big, big wireless network. So I have a lot to look through, but I can compare my best and worst performing access points and look for anomalies here. Why is this such, why would this be such a big issue right now? Because a lot of people are looking at upgrading to Wi-Fi 6 and they're saying, oh, I'll just upgrade all my old access points first. Well, you know, that doesn't always work because sometimes your older access points are at locations where you only have a couple users. If you've got an older access point and you only have three users on it, you might not need to upgrade that one. Whereas you might have a wave two access point that's almost state of the art, yet it's got 60 users on it. And you might be much better served of upgrading that access point to Wi-Fi 6. So this will give you a much more intelligent view. We can go down here and look by date what the utilization was of these devices, uh, where utilization was up or down. And I can, like I said, I can go uh, by number of clients, I can arrange this by number of clients, by uh, uh, quality, or by throughput. I can do peer comparison with buildings. Um, so this is uh, this is actually doing uh, radio frequencies, but I can do look at uh, places where I have high interference and compare that. So this is giving me a lot of different trends and, uh, and insights on different parts of my network and how to manage them. Um, so that was client health. Let's look at application health. Now, while that is loading, I'll go back to the slide that I was on when I ran away from this and kind of explain to you, this is a really bad slide. I'm sorry, sorry guys, I actually built this myself the other day. But what it's trying to show you is that I have different job roles and device roles in my company, okay? So I have people that work in sales, finance, marketing, and I have video cameras. Now, all of these different individuals have different policies. Uh, sales, for example, they're, the applications that are relevant or critical to them doing their job are things like CRM, uh, collaboration, they're quoting software to do job quotes. My finance people are doing invoicing, payroll, and CRM. Marketing people are using graphics. Uh, my cameras are probably using a DR, DVR application. And maybe if I'm using uh, video analytics, there's an analytics application they need access to. But then there are other applications that these people maybe don't need such good QoS or maybe completely irrelevant. If my salespeople are on Facebook, they're probably not doing their job or it's definitely not something that's critical to their job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create policies so that each one of these roles has a different application settings, different application experience for each one of these job roles. So let's go back and show you with application health. So with application health, I can choose business relevant applications and look at the health of those business relevant applications. Now I have put, these are my top business relevant applications for this particular profile. And then I can drill down here into the actual um, per server, the usage, throughput, packet loss, latency, jitter, all of this of these particular applications and look for things um, that are issues. For example, this has a health issue of six. 
So I may want to see what's going on with this application. Is the server slow? Is the core switch that's uh, located there? Is the port that it's connected to having issues? Is there something wrong with the, with the network that's causing this particular application not to have the experience that my users need? And you'll see I have the same time travel. I can go back in time and look at how this is performing. Let's go back seven days and see how long this has been in the yellow. Still loading. Let's go down here while that is loading. Oh, there it is. It's loaded. Okay. So this started um, just a couple of days ago. In fact, it got real bad at 8 in the morning on the 16th. So there it is. This is our problem. It's the latency. Application SSL is experiencing high network latency on the interface, on the gigabit interface. Okay, there are the latency numbers there. This is telling me it's not able to resolve it. So it's probably not a switch issue. It's probably an issue with the actual server. So we can look at and see what this issue is uh, and flag it. So not only can I look at my network, I can look at my applications and get uh, get help on my applications. So that's the NA Center Assurance. Let's talk about security and profiles. Now we talked about profiles just now so that I could explain to you how application experience works. But basically what we want to do is create an atmosphere where each of those job profiles only sees what they need to see for two reasons. First of all, for security, but also for better performance. So we want to make sure that different applications or different job roles or device identities like door locks, cameras, point of sales, they can only see or have access to things that they need to have access to. And the way we do this is with this um, matrix. And the way the matrix works is <clears throat> I will create a role. For example, auditors, uh, bring your own device, contractors, developers, as you can see here. And then I will create rules for each one of these. So let's, let's look where these actually are within the system. Now, this server, I happen to know, is down. So we're going to go look at a video of this. Now, this is within the policy part of DNA Center. And within the policy part, you're, you're going to see the sites that you have, the devices you have, and you're going to see the network profiles you have um, within here. So if I go, I go click on policy, and here is that matrix. So across the top of the matrix, I'm going to have every single uh, policy that I have. Now, in the old days, we would have called these VLANs. So I have, across the top, I have uh, all of my, my lists and across the horizontal as well. So then we have source and destination. So I can say from one direction, I will allow a certain amount of certain type of traffic and from the other direction, I won't. So if I'm looking here, for example, I'm, I'm hovering over doctors, I can look at the different types of things that doctors within this healthcare or this hospital can see and things they can't see. And I can create, I can either leave the profile as default, which is gray, you're seeing there gray, or I can change it to green, see everything, red, see nothing, or the blue here, which is a custom profile. And the custom profile will allow me to limit certain types or at certain ports. You'll notice that the the network, the, the numbers of profiles get really big. So there's a thumbnail to the right, which shows me all of the profiles. In a big, big, big network, this could literally be hundreds and hundreds of different po policies. Think of a hospital. 
and all of the different types of IoT devices that they have, from heart rate monitors to iPads to everything, everything needs a policy for security in QoS so that this map could get really, really big. So if I click on one of these custom uh, policies, I can look and see what the policy is. So I've set up for certain types of actions, I'm denying certain types I'm allowing uh, based on either uh, exploits that are common or different things like this. Now within this program, we have recommendations. If you're not familiar with this, and this is an area that uh, Cisco CX has a lot of training on and videos you can go in and look how to do this. Also, I told you that we'd be going into a little bit of a um, of roadmap. And in the next release of DNA Center, we'll be releasing something that will do analytics on this and will actually look for holes in your policies and segmentation, things that you didn't do, policies you didn't put in place that you probably should have, or things that you put in place that might be a little too restrictive for the performance of your network, and then you can decide if that was uh, what you want to do or not. But the policy part of DNA Center really allows you a lot of granularity. And as I said, this supports both Layer 2 and Layer 3 policies. Now, what I'm showing now is that this particular policy, AP Production, some is a really weird name, but this was learned from ACI. That's in my data center. And this is part of the cross-domain work that we're doing at Cisco. So I created a policy within my ACI server in my data center, and those uh, packets are coming onto my campus network. So DNA Center is saying, hey, I'm flagging this policy. Should we respect it? And you can make the decision to whether that becomes a policy that you authorize on your local campus or not. And that could be very critical to making sure that that particular um, data center service works well. All right, so why is policy so important? Well, here are a couple of employees on the network and they are communicating within what would be their own, say, VLAN. Uh, but it's done through policy. So I don't have to go in and assign VLANs to different ports, different switches, or different individuals. It's just automatic. It makes it a lot simpler. And if there's someone that's suspicious that's trying to get into that, we can see that and flag it immediately. Um, another thing that I want to talk about before I get into the Q&A is that we have a division within Cisco that's called customer experience and customer experience does two things first of all they sell services and that scares a lot of people I don't want to I don't I don't want to buy Cisco services and but the other thing that uh, customer experience does it's really cool they have tons of videos and trainings and white papers and one of the things that they have put together are these customer experience use cases and let me show you basically what they're doing with this. What they're doing is they are mapping challenges to DNA journeys. So let's say that you say, um, I'm having issues with my switch QoS settings for the many types of wireless clients. So we talked earlier about barcode scanners. I, I buy a new system of Bosch barcode scanners and Bosch says I'm supposed to configure this or that or the other in my switches. And I'm just going, oh my gosh, I've got, I've got you know, uh, 88 switches of that model. I'm gonna have to go in and configure all of them. Well, no, you can automate those changes. So they have a use case that takes you through that. So you say, you know what? I'm going to deploy DNA Center, but I'm not going to do insur assurance. I'm not going to do policy and segmentation. I just want to get this automation in hand. And they have all of the white papers and support completely free that will take you through that. And basically what that means is that um, you're able to walk through that use case one at a time. You don't have to try to you know, set the world on fire from, from day one with DNA Center. You can go at your own pace. Um, and like I said, those, um, those particular services are absolutely free. Um, those were on the customer experience portal. You can see those on the DNA Center uh, website. So I'm going to get to some questions now. The next step is just ask someone to show you DNA Center. You can get a free trial at your company and just walk through all of this. All right, so 
Uh, will the slide deck be available? Yes, it'll be available in PDF format. If you're a Cisco partner, you can get it in a regular PowerPoint to present to your customers. Really good question. What is the difference between telemetry versus SNMP three polling and traps? Well, really simple. SNMP is where my network management system is polling the devices. It says, send me your trap. So you have what's called the management information database, your MIBS. And the MIBS is the list of things that I want to know from you. So if you're a switch, there are certain things that I want to get from that switch, uh, a list of, uh, you know, uh, latency, uh, load, throughput, whatever is on that MIB database, I'm going to pull that switch and it's going to give me that information. And that's the way SNMP works. So there are two problems with this. The first problem is you're going out and you're polling all these devices and waiting for them to respond. So there's a traffic issue. Second of all, the polling is very infrequent. And how much you poll really depends on the network management system you're using, the switches you're using, and so forth. But it could be anywhere from um, 20 seconds to once an hour. And so you don't really get a good updates. Telemetry is where your switch is programmed to send real-time updates to DNA Center on certain features or things that are important to you. And this helps you both on the assurance side so that you know when you're having problems, but also on automation side. As you're doing an upgrade, you want up updates um, as you're going through it. Um, so telemetry is in real time. And it's much more granular. There's a lot more information happening. Um, so how would you resolve an issue with high utilization here? Does it give suggestions? <laughs> well, yes. So again, the network was really slow and it kept timing out. But normally what it will do, it will tell you, it will give you suggestions such as put your, um, your wireless on another channel, um, turn on um, uh, uh, clean air, on your access point. Sometimes people will turn off clean air and put it on a certain channel. Always a good idea to leave clean air on, and that way the access point will dynamically switch to the cleanest channel. Um, but in really, really high interference situations, and you know, anyone that has a building next to a school will, will tell you right you know, point blank, there's just so many wireless devices, Wi-Fi devices, or an airport, close to an airport, that you're just not going to get around having interference. And, those are the buildings that you want to move towards a Wi-Fi 6, where you have a different Wi-Fi uplink. It's called OFDMA. It will give you much better performance. But it will give you, obviously, um, things that you can do to resolve that. Try this. And usually it'll, it'll do, unless there's only one sure cause, like if it's a DHCP server is, is wrong or you've, you've limited your access points to a certain number of users, it's going to show you that, boom, point blank. But most of the time, there, it could be a number of causes. So it'll say, try this first, then try this, then try this. And it'll normally do that when it's not involving the radio. So if, you're, if your client is not able to connect and get an IP address, they could be using the wrong login. So the first thing it's going to tell you is check the credentials. Number two, uh, check uh, to make sure it's getting an IP address. Now, one of the th interesting things that this leads us to is that we're also doing a uh, deal with Apple and with Samsung where those phones and tablets send us error codes. So if that was, if an Apple iPhone or a Samsung S10 or S20 was not getting an IP address, it would send us that error code and then DNA Center would tell you this phone is not getting an IP address from the DHCP server, and that makes it really easy. But um, oftentimes, um, it will give you three or four different suggestions. Um, what version of DNA Center is this? This is 1.3.3.1. And you can see the, uh, the release notes on that online. Is it possible to link ICE and DNA to have all end user logs? Absolutely. In fact, it's strongly recommended to link ICE and DNA. Now, what I was showing you with the matrix of services and profiles, that can all be done in DNA Center and then set up, pushed out to ICE. 
so that you have the control and the granularity that ICE gives you uh, with DNA Center. Uh, next uh, question is App360 there for Wi-Fi. I noticed the metrics look better than for switches. You're right. There's a lot more metrics on Wi-Fi. And the reason for that is uh, really the customers have asked for that. We want to see more of this or more of that because obviously a lot more can go wrong over wireless and a lot more problems happen with wireless than with wired switches. So what we're going to show you on wired switches have more to do with the load and so forth. Going back to roadmap, for those of you that bared through us all this time, we will also be announcing a new power over Ethernet window in the next version of DNA Center, which will give you power over Ethernet issues on your switches. So you'll see, you'll be able to see the power consumption on a per port basis. You'll be able to look at clients that are, that are taking more power than they should, which could be an issue with that client. Also tell you if, if you're starting to overload a switch. Also, if you have a remote location, uh, maybe a, a, a retail location where they're installing cameras, you can tell them remotely the ports that they should be installing those cameras into based on the available power in your switches. So that'll be really cool too. Uh, next question, can we use this with multi-tenants? Unfortunately, we do not support multi-tenant right now. Um, we are working on a DNA Center cloud version which is in diapers right now, it's, it's, uh, it, it, you can uh, talk to your account manager and do um, uh, first release testing of DNA Center Cloud, which would be the best bet for multi-tenant. But with DNA Center on-premises, we're not supporting uh, multi-tenant right now. Um, for Cisco new certifications, when the Cisco DNA Center will be available for practice for students. Um, so we have a lot of free training already available online. I would go to DNA Center. Um, so if you go to cisco.com slash go slash DNA Center, you'll go to the DNA Center website. And towards the bottom, you'll see all the different types of demos you can do in certifications, uh, including one-on-one. -on -one or a demo in your office. Um, so from which versions of Cisco Prime Infrastructure were we able to upload sync of DNA Center? Good question. I'll need to go back to that slide because I believe I put it in the notes. I didn't put in, I did not put that in my notes. So I'll need to look that up for you. I'm not sure which version it is. It is like the last three versions it's been in there. So I would go into your current version of prime infrastructure and look for, uh, look for the um, uh, DNA center migration. It is under settings. Um, and uh, within Prime Infrastructure. If you don't see it, then go on to Prime Infrastructure and look for the latest upgrades and see which version you're on. Can we generate a heat map for the access points? You absolutely can. Let me show you. Um, so I wanted to show you this, but it was just loading so slow this uh, over the internet today that I, uh, I didn't wait for it to load. But here is a, a heat map that I'm generating. Now, there are heat, you can do a heat map per access point. You can do the overlay heat maps. Um, here I'm showing you the heat map from a wireless active sensor um, using the packet analyzer. But yes, you can do a heat map for all of your access points, show your overlays, your interference, and so forth uh, within uh, DNA Center or any of your buildings. And you can compare. Uh, in that uh, analytics slide, I was showing you the comparison between the different uh, buildings and so forth. You can also do that with a heat map. Um, could you demo some of the AMSA, Apple Samsung visibility? I have a slide on that actually right here uh, that, uh, since I'm here. So here is basically the event viewer, what you can see. And basically what it's going to do is send us the error code. So if the Samsung client says, I can't 
log into the AAA server. I'm not getting an answer. Or um, I'm being rejected. If I'm being rejected, they're using the wrong credentials. If I'm not getting an IP address, that's the DHCP server. If I'm not able to connect, connect so it'll, it will tell you, the device will tell you what's going on with it. And, um, and then that just makes it that much easier. So basically what it is, it's just the error code. Uh, we'll, it'll also tell you the device you should be able to see here. It's telling me this is a Samsung Galaxy 3. This is the MAC address. Um, it's going to tell me the location, uh, what it's connected to, what VLAN it's on, uh, its IP address, the band, 5 gigahertz. So it's going to give me the, the device, the model, the software load number, and then any error codes that are happening. And Apple is going to do the same thing. Um, all right. So I think that's all the questions that we have for now. So I'm going to throw this back to Anna. I thank you all for attending. And I uh, hope you have a great, uh, safe day. For hopefully, you're working from home today. Thank you, Deval, and thank you to our audience members for your time and participation today.